All right, guys, today we are going to be doing a little bit of a breakdown. We're going to be talking about Spyderco versus Benchmade versus Zero Tolerance. Now, I try not to get too caught up in arguments on the blade forms and knife just groups and stuff as a whole, but I hear a lot of people talking smack, especially about Zero Tolerance and how, you know, they would much rather take a Benchmade over a ZT. So I thought today I would talk about Spyderco as kind of almost a, you know, just... So I thought I would use Spyderco as kind of a standard of measure. You know, Spydercos are pretty consistent, pretty good. Most people can agree that they like them, even if they don't love every design. Um, and then talk about Benchmade and Zero Tolerance as well. So first off, you know, when it comes to Spydercos, um, and just talking about the knives we'll be comparing here, we have a Spyderco smock. We have a Benchmade bug out, not a mini bug out, but just a normal bug out. And then we have a ZT0450. And this is the um, carbon fiber edition. So you have the carbon fiber show side on this. And of course this one is in CPM S35 VN. So this is a pretty good, I would say pretty popular knife from ZT. And honestly, this is I think a really good representation of why I think zero tolerance is at least comparable if not better than Benchmade. So like I said, I hear a lot of people talking a lot of smack about, you know, oh, if they had to choose between these two especially, you know, they would definitely take a Benchmade. But for me, I really don't get this argument because when you look at, objectively speaking, a Benchmade, and for this sake, we do have a old school um, Blade HQ limited edition Benchmade bug out here. So this is in CPM 20 CV. And uh, this one at the time of release was about the same cost as a normal Benchmade bug out. So I got this thing for $149 or something like that. But to be fair, um, nowadays you cannot get a Benchmade bug out like a standard plain Jane CPM S. 30V Benchmade bug out will run you about $200. So this is a little bit of an anomaly because this is a better, you know, kind of knife. Um, and at the time it was about the same price. That's why I bought it because it was a higher performance version for the same price as a lower performance version of a Benchmade. However, if you're looking at it realistically, this is going to cost you about $200. Now, the cool thing about ZT knives is Things like this 0450, which is comparable in size, weight, and in most specifications. For those wondering why I chose the ZT0450, these are pretty comparable knives in most of their specifications. But this knife, standard, like brand new, is going to run you about $150, if not less than that. So for that, even if we are talking about closer to $200, say you pay $180 for this, it is still a better deal than a ben Benchmade bug out, just a standard plain Jane for $200. And here's why. First off, of course, blade steel. So the plain Jane bug outs are still using CPM S30V. This is CPM S35VN. Next thing is you have a full carbon fiber. And when I mean full carbon fiber, I mean this entire scale is made out of carbon fiber, not peel applied carbon fiber G10, unfortunately, like a spider co. Uh, this is a full slab of like honest to God, just um, carbon fiber. And so it is a full on carbon fiber show scale. And the reason why I really emphasize being full carbon fiber, once again, that is more expensive. And two, that is an extra weight savings. Carbon fiber is incredibly light. So if you have a full scale made out of carbon fiber, it is incredibly light. So that is a huge plus in my opinion. Now, like I said, better blade steel, better handle material. And then on your non-show side, your lock side is a full piece of titanium. So this one in particular is blacked out. You can get these coated or uncoated. This one just happens to be coated, but either way, you slice it, whether it's a coated version like this or a non-coated, you're still going to get the titanium side. This is just black titanium um, or black coated titanium. And then also you get a very nice um, hardened steel insert here. So it's kind of hard to see, but that's what actually interfaces with your, you know, like action. So your locking mechanism. So you're going to get good wear resistance. Of course, it is removable if it ever, you know, needs to be replaced. And then of course that same um, lock bar insert 
um, serves as the over travel stop. So it's kind of cut into the lock side so that you can't hyperextend your frame lock. Now, some people may dislike the fact that this is a frame lock. I really don't have any issues with this being a frame lock. Um, you know, once again, many solid knives are frame locks. So for EDC use, I have no problem with that. Now, lastly, as you guys can see here, this is an incredibly smooth knife and it is running on um, ceramic ball bearings. So it is a very, very smooth knife here and of course has a fantastic Sinkovich designed flipper um, that is a trailing point blade. And so you get a lot of really good performance out of this edge and this overall blade shape. So overall, when we're looking at it, those are the qualities that you get out of this blade and it is cheaper than a Benchmade bug out. And once again, like I said, I picked the Benchmade bug out for comparable price. Now, the other thing you might say is, well, a typical argument, and once again, something that's brought up with Spyderco's a lot, is this Spyderco smock, which again, once again, is comparably priced, is also not made in the US. So a lot of people will sit there and be like, well, I have this US made bench made and that's what makes it worth more money. Well, ZT is also made in the US. And so that is yet another thing that ZT does very well. Now, lastly, I will say kind of rounding out the conversation is that these knives uh, like their, their quality, their QC. And for me, in my opinion, I have not, I've had, I think four or five ZTs. So I haven't had like tons and tons, but I've also ran into a lot of people that have owned ZTs and stuff. And I have others in my collection currently, and none of them outside of being heavy users, um, none of them have, you know, like anything, no lock rock, no lock stick. Um, the once again, the pivot and um, overall performance of it, perfectly fine. Heat treat is just fine. And everything about these knives for their price point is totally acceptable. And so overall, I will say if you guys ever sit there and, you know, are wondering, or should I get a Benchmade or should I get a zero tolerance? I would say absolutely look at zero tolerance because the biggest downside to ZT is that they aren't really making a lot of new designs. They are actually starting to make some as we speak, but they have kind of been sitting on their laurels and they haven't really been producing a lot of new designs, but they do have a lot of good solid options out. And if you find a knife that ZT makes that is once again comparable to something that a Benchmade would make, I would definitely recommend trying it out because the performance, the quality, and what you're getting penny for pound is going to be superior to the Benchmade product. Even when it comes to some spider codes like the smock, this ZT is still putting in the work because this is G10 carbon fiber. This is G10 carbon fiber in comparison to, you know, full carbon fiber and titanium. This is made in Taiwan. This is made in the US. This is S30V. This is S35VN. So you're still getting a better product for a lower cost. It's really great to see, like honestly, ZT is quite a performer. Another one I would even consider is the sister company to ZT, um, Kershaw. They are putting out a lot of really good US made options as well, especially automatics and OTFs. So that's my little mini rant on why I think ZT and Kershaw are actually really solid companies that are definitely worth checking out and investing some time and money in because they consistently undercut their competitors, bringing you in, once again, good, good quality, good, good quality, good products, good materials, good prices. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.